nobody seems to care. It's like we've lost our mind. You take a look at the news. Crime is at an all time high. We can't keep pretending to be blind. No more prayer in the schools. Now kids have one less good thing to choose. And now they're being killed in the classrooms. I wish I could take it all away. But all I can do is pray that things change. Something's gotta change. I pray things change. We can't go on like this. The way that we so let's pray. HIV is on the rise, spreading throughout this land. We can't keep pretending to be fine. Hello, this is Derek Briggs, and I'm here to give you some weekly wisdom. This is a teaching that is that has a lot. Um, and if you are a person that doesn't like names and genealogies, it may not be for you, but I promise you, if you stick around, that there is something that will uh, be beneficial for your for your journey, for your walk. So we're talking about the genealogy of Jesus, understanding the differences between Matthew's and Luke's gospel. Now, let me say this. I had a conversation with someone who stated that there was a conflict in the genealogy of Christ between Matthew and Luke. And because they wanted to know who was Jesus's father. And therefore, since there was a conflict, said that the Bible is unreliable. Well, let me say something to you. The Bible is the proven truth and it is the word of God. Second Timothy three and six says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I think that the inconsistencies arise from a lack of understanding what is written. It comes from not understanding um, the history, the authors, the audience, the writing styles, and most importantly, not having the Holy Spirit to understand these spiritual things. And without the revelation of the Holy Spirit, you are reading words and stories and trying to make sense of it logically. We're going to understand the significance of Abraham, the significance of of David, the significance of Zerubbabel, the significance of obedience versus disobedience, um, the the significance of the the law of inheritance involving uh, women with no brothers uh, and how do we, how do we today tie into all of this? Okay. That's what we're going to be uh, covering in this teaching. There are two names that we have to be concerned with involving this genealogy. The first is Abraham, okay? As an unconditional promise or covenant, God established with him in in Genesis that Genesis 12 and 3, he said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And he said in 22 and 18, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. All right. Then God extended this covenant to David in second Samuel seven verse eight says, now, therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant, David, thus saith the Lord of hosts. 
I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over Israel. Verse 12. And when the days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of the bowels and I will establish his kingdom. Verse 13, he shall build an house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee and thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Then in Galatians 3, the promise to Abraham was fulfilled. He said, not unto seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. So he let him know that Christ is that seed that all nations, all families of the earth would be blessed through. And then in Luke 1, that promise to David is going to be made known, is going to be declared when Gabriel met Mary. Luke 1 and 31, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. These two people that are important in this genealogy, they play a major role. Now, let's get into um, the genealogy. And we're going to begin with Matthew. And the important facts we need to understand about the genealogy is that it is intentional. The genealogy is intentional. It is based on obedience and disobedience. So obedience includes you, whereas disobedience results in exclusion. Okay. First off, it was a patriarchal society. It was all about the male. A male child was most important. Carrying on the father's name was very important, right? So you would need to understand specific Jewish laws for raising seed for men without children and also the Jewish law of adopting daughters and husbands. Okay. We're going to cover all of that. So let's get started. The book of Matthew presents Jesus as the Messiah. It's about what he said to the Jews and the genealogy goes back to, or begins with Abraham. Matthew is going to trace the legal authority through Joseph. Okay. Now the customs of their day was that in Israel, you had to marry a virgin. If the woman was found not to be pure, it canceled the marriage. So we know that Mary was a virgin. We already know that. And when Joseph found out he was going to divorce her, but the angel appeared to him in Matthew. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying, Joseph, Thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Verse 1 says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. These are the children of Israel, okay? Verse 3 says, And Judas begat Perez, and Zerah of Tamar and Perez begot Ezram and Ezram begot Aram. Now, let me, let me say this. Perez is born to Tamar, who is actually the wife of Judas's uh, son, Ur. All right. And, and then Onan, this is in Genesis uh, 38. And how Perez came to be is because Judas had Judah had promised Tamar that he would give her the next son, that he would, would be her husband so that um, he could raise up seed for the for his brother. 
and he didn't do that. And so she played a prostitute and got pregnant and he was going to put her away, get rid of her for, for playing the holic until he found out that he was the man who had impregnated her. Okay. So Ferez would be a bastard because he's an illegitimate child. Okay. But he found, but because of grace, he's included here. Verse four says, and Aram begat Amenadab, and Amenadab begat Nason, and Nason begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz or Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Boaz is of Rahab. Rahab was a harlot from uh, a prostitute from 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 uh, Jericho. Okay, and when she received the men of God and hid them and protected them, she found favor when they was when Israel was getting ready to destroy uh, these different nations uh, on their way to their promised land. Okay. So according to the law, um, Perez should not be in the lineage, but because they wasn't supposed to enter into the congregation and neither was Rahab supposed to enter into the congregation because she was a prostitute and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth and Obed begat Jesse and Ruth. Ruth should not be in the lineage either because Ruth was a Moabite. So a Moabite was not supposed to enter into the congregation. But because of grace, we see all of these people here. And I just want to throw these names on because certain names, I'm going to stop and talk about them so you can understand um, why they're here. OK, um, verse six says. And Jesse begat David, the king, and David, the king, begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias and Solomon begat Roboam or Rehoboam and Roboam begat Abiah and Abiah begat Asa. Solomon was the last king to rule over Israel as one nation. And because of idolatry, the nation split in two. You had the Northern kingdom was, was the house of Israel, Southern kingdom, the house of Judah. Now you have to remember obedience versus disobedience. Therefore, the northern kingdom, um, they were involved in idolatry. So the lineage of Christ is not going to go through the northern kingdom. It's going to go through the southern kingdom. OK, so it goes through um, Rehoboam, one of Solomon's son. Verse eight says, and Asa begat Jehoshaphat and Jehoshaphat begat Joram and Joram begat Ozias. Because of disobedience, it's going to skip. Ahaziah, Athaliah, and Joash, and Amaziah. Okay, let me show you why. For Ahaziah, 2 Kings 8 and 27 says, and he walked, and he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for he was the son in law of the house of Ahab. So this is why he's not included. Athaliah was actually a woman that was queen. Second Kings 11 and one says, and when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the, the royal seed. Basically when, when she found out that her son was dead, she went and killed all the royal, you know, all the, the, the royal seed and stuff, except one that was hid. Joash, First Chronicles 24 and 17 says, Now after the death of Jehoiada came the princes of Judah and made obeisance to the king. Then the king hearkened unto them, and they left the house of the Lord God unto their fathers and served groves and idols. And the wrath and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their trespass. Then you have Amaziah, Second Chronicles 25 and 14. Now it came to pass after that Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites that he brought the gods of the children of Ser and set them up to be his gods and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Wherefore, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah and he sent unto him a prophet which said unto him, 
Why hast thou sought after the gods of the people which could not deliver their own people out of thine hand? So because of their disobedience, they're not included in this lineage. Back to Matthew, verse 9 says, Ozias begat Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias. Verse 10 says, and Ezekias begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away into Babylon. Okay, here's another pause. So even after the nation split into two kingdoms, northern and southern kingdom, because of idolatry, because of disobedience, since the northern nation continued in disobedience, what's going to happen is now they're going to end up in captivity. They went into uh, Assyrian captivity uh, over 100 years before the southern kingdom eventually uh, went into captivity, into Babylonian captivity. Okay. So here, since this lineage is going through the southern kingdom, we're dealing with um, we're dealing with Jeconias. OK. So Jeconias, a.k.a. Jehoiakim, a.k.a. Coniah, was king of Judah, southern kingdom. All right. He was the next to the last king of Judah before they went into Babylonian captivity. The last king is going to be Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, okay? Jehoiakim, because of Jehoiakim, there's going to be a curse on the bloodline of Jehoiakim, okay? And you, you should understand that this is going to mess up the lineage, okay? In Jeremiah 22, verse 18 says, Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or Ah, his glory. Verse 19, he shall be buried with the burial of an ass, drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Drop down to verse 28. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out? He and his seed and are cast into a land which they know not. Verse 29. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Okay. So you understand that curse was put on that bloodline because of his wickedness, because he was evil. Let's go back to Matthew verse 12 says, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel is the grandson of Jehoiakim, that second to last king. But he's going to be the leader of the first group of returning ex exiles when they come back from Babylon, when they were under Cyrus and they're coming back into the land um, after Babylonian captivity. In First Chronicles 3, verse 17 says, And the sons of Jeconiah, Aser, Salathiel, his son, Malchirim also, and Pedadiah, Pedaya, and Shenazer, Jechemiah, Hoshamah, and Nedabiah. And the sons of Pedadiah were Zerubbabel and Shemel. And the sons of Zerubbabel, Meshulam and Hananiah, and Shalomith, their sister. It says the sons of Pedadiah was Zerubbabel and Shemel. Okay. It says that Jeconiah's sons are Aser, Salathiel. I lost my place. Malkirim, Padiah, Shenazar, Jeconiah, Hoshama, and Nadabia. Now, there is 
first of all, you need to understand that Salathiel didn't have any sons. Salathiel has no son, no sons. Okay. Why is this important? Because there is a Mosaic law which requires that the brothers of a deceased brother should marry his brother's widow. And the first child should be dedicated to the deceased brother. The first child is raised for the deceased brother in order that the name carries on. OK, and this is called the duty of the husband's brothers in, in, in Deuteronomy 25. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bear it shall succeed in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. Okay. You understand that? So this means that since Shalathiel did not have any children, that Padiah raised up seed for Shalathiel. Okay. Therefore, Zerubbabel is listed as the son of Shalathiel, okay, instead of being the son, the son of Padiah, okay? So watch this. In Ezra chapter 3, it says, Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Zozadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shalathiel, and his brethren. You see that? Verse 8 says, Zerubbabel, the son of Shalathiel. Ezra 5 and 2 says, Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shalathiel. You see, and all I'm, I'm trying to do is show you um, that from that point, who, you know, what he's listed, whose son he's listed as. So when you read Chronicles, you may see it a little bit different, but the 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 lineage based on obedience versus disobedience. And it, there has there, it, there is a spiritual connection to it. OK, so but what we have to understand about Zerubbabel is that Zerubbabel was chosen in Haggai 2 and 23. It says that. Um, in that day, said the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shalathiel, said the Lord, and will make thee as a signet for I have chosen thee, said the Lord of Host. OK, so this is why Zerubbabel is placed there. OK, so this is that first time that you're seeing something a little bit different with Zerubbabel. OK, but because of the, the curse on the bloodline. All right. Let's get back to Matthew. Verse 13 says, and Zerubbabel begat Abihu, and Abihu begat Eliakim and Eliakim begat Azor. So. In, Jerub in Zerubbabel's line is mentioned that he has seven uh, sons and one daughter. They are not mentioned in either genealogy. OK, that's going to be very important. But but it goes straight to um, uh, Abayu. Once again, we're dealing with that 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 obedience thing. OK, so in Chronicles, first Chronicles eight, verse three says, and the sons of Bala are Adar and Gerar and Abayu. This is the Abayu that is listed as Zerubbabel's son and not his biological children. OK. And as begat Zadok and Zadok begat Achim and Achim begat Eliu and Eliu begat Eleazar and Eleazar begat Methan and Methan begat Jacob. And this is going to be this is going to be Joseph's grandfather, Methan with an in Methan, because a lot of these names are are repetitive and the 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 spelling are very similar but this is joseph joseph's grandfather is Methan. okay verse 16 says and jacob begat joseph the husband of mary of whom was born jesus who is called 
Christ. Verse 17, so all the generations of Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So 14, 14, 14, Abraham to David, David to Babylon, Babylon to Christ, 14 generations. Again, Matthew traces that legal authority through Joseph, beginning with Abraham through David, through Solomon to Zerubbabel and Abihu. Okay, let's get to the book of Luke. Now remember, the book of Luke presents Jesus as the son of man. It's written to the Greeks. And the genealogy goes all the way back to the first man. It's going to trace the authority through Mary. Okay, now remember, remember this again. Remember the customs of the day. They had to marry a virgin. If the woman was not found to be pure, it canceled the marriage. In Matthew, the angel visited Joseph. In the book of Luke, Gabriel is going to appear to the virgin Mary. Verse 26 says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a, unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin name was Mary and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women remember there was a curse on the bloodline because of Jehoiakim well this virgin birth birth is going to eliminate the curse so this is another reason why Jesus was born of a virgin. One is to meet the sacrificial requirements for atonement. And the other is to eliminate the curse that was on the bloodline. OK, let's get back to this. Luke 3 and 23 says, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Heli. As was supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Heli. OK, so it's like saying they thought he was the son of Joseph, but actually he would be the son of Mary's father, Heli. OK, how is this possible? Now we need to understand the law of inheritance involving women with no brothers. So there's a man in the Bible by the name of Zelophehad. Zelophehad had five daughters and no sons. So they went to Moses and they asked Moses for an inheritance and say that my father's inheritance should not die because he doesn't have any sons. What about us? That's what they were asking. So let's go to, to Numbers 27. Our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away with from among his family? Because he had no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their fathers to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no sons, then he shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that, that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it, and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, they ask for this inheritance, Moses gave it to him. It was and then it was um, it was granted by Joshua in Joshua 17. As a result of this law of inheritance, the husband 
of the daughter would then uh, be adopted by the father-in-law. Okay. So if a man died having no sons, the inheritance would go to the daughter. When that daughter gets married, the father-in-law is going to adopt that man. And that man is going to be after, it's going to be his son. You understand that? So watch this. Go to, go, go to, let me show you the example. In Ezra 2 and 61. And the children of the priests, the children of Habiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillia, which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillia, the, the, the Gileadite, and was called after their name. Also in Nehemiah 7 and 63, it says, And the priests, the children of Habai, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillia, which took on of the daughters of Barzillia, the Gileadite, to wife and was called after their name, called after their name. OK, so when we go back to Luke's genealogy, this is what happened with Heli. And Jesus be himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. You see, because Mary, I got to understand, Mary was not married. OK, Mary was not married. Um. Apparently, Heli didn't have any any sons. He had Mary. Mary was a virgin. So being that Joseph married her, now Joseph is going to be considered Mary's father's son. You got that? All right. I told you this was I told you this would be good. All right. Verse 24, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. OK, now. Joseph's grandfather was named Mathan with an N. Mary's grandfather is named Mathat with a T. OK, and when you look up Mathat in the uh, in the concordance, it'll let you know that it is the grandfather of Mary, because what I'm 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 just consistently trying to show you is that the reason why there's a different in lineage is because it's going through diff two different people. Mary, we're dealing with Luke. We're dealing with Mary, Mary, Mary. Okay. Verse 25 says, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Elsie, Esli, which was the son of Nagi, which was the son of Math, which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Simi, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Judah, verse 27, which was the son of Joanna, which was the son of Risa, which was the son of Zerubbabel, which was the son of Salathiel, which was the son of Neri. OK, so here we're going to see Zerubbabel again, because remember, Zerubbabel was chosen. But we see Risa, the, the son of Zerubbabel in this genealogy. OK, and we see Salathiel, which was the son of Neri. Now, Neri is not related to Simon. However, because of obedience is included in this genealogy. OK. I hope that I hope that this is making sense. OK, verse 28. Which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Adai, which was the son of Kosam, which was the son of Elmadam, which was the son of Ur, which was the son of Jose. <laughs> which was the son of Eleazar, which was the son of Joram, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Simeon, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Joseph, which was the son of Jonan, which was the son of Eliakim, which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Menon, which was the son of Matthai, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. Okay, now we're still on David, but now you're seeing that this line, Mary's line, is going through Nate, uh, through David's other son, 2 Samuel 5 and 14. And these be the names of those that were born unto him. We're talking about to uh, David in Jerusalem, Shammai, Shobab, and Nathan and Solomon. OK, so the promise is about David and Abraham. Zerubbabel is chosen. All right. 
So we're still going through those same people are still involved. It's just different branches that it's going through. OK, so we're still going to end up with David. So you need to still understand that that um, that Mary is connected to David just as Joseph was connected to was related to David. Both of them are related to him. OK, um, at this point, the lineages are going to basically line up. OK, all right. Verse 32 which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nason, which was the sons of Amenadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Ezram, which was the son of Perez, which was the son of Judah. Okay. Verse 24, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Therah, which was the son of Nahor. And let me say this because I've said that they're going to align. Okay. So now when you go back to Genesis chapter 10, you're going to see that, that, that lineage of Abraham, where Abraham come from beginning with Adam, they're going to be, they're going to be the same thing because we're going, because Luke is going all the way back to that first man, Adam. Okay. So at this point it's, it's, it's basically consistent. Okay. Let me, um, well, let me just, finish reading verse 37 verse 38 what 37 which was the son of methuselah which was the son of enoch which was the son of jared which was the son of malalel which was the son of canaan which was the son of enos which was the son of seth which was the son of adam which was the son of god okay now in luke let's understand it recap in luke mary lineage goes through david through nathan through Zerubbabel, through Risa. Okay. Whereas Matthew goes to Abraham, to David, to Solomon, to uh, Salatio, Zerubbabel, and then to Abihu. Okay. And as I said before, this the the at a certain point with David, the 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 lineages, the genealogy is going to be consistent going backwards. Okay. Now, here's the thing. The purpose of this genealogy is to show that God is faithful to his promises. And it demonstrates that no matter who was disobedient, no matter the level of disobedience, God always had a remnant that remained faithful that he could use. OK, OK. But now the question becomes, how do we fit into this? What does this have to do with, with us? What is the spiritual connection for us today? Okay, well, when you consider Romans 8 and 9, which says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren, combined with John 1 and 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor will of the flesh, nor will of man, but of God. A family is going to be established. Matthew 12 and 50, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and Mother, this is Jesus' response to when they told him that his mother and brethren were outside. And he asked them, well, who is my mother and my brethren? Only those that do the will of my father. Then that family that is established is of a nation of, of king and priests. Revelation 1 and 6. And he had made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. When you consider all of those things, when the Bible declared in Matthew 1 and 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. We are of the generation with Christ. That generation 15, we are of that same generation with Christ. And this 
renders your physical genealogy, your physical lineage null and void. Do you understand that? So because we become sons of God by accepting Christ, who all of this leads to, who is the promise to to Abraham and then to 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 David. He becomes the firstborn of many brethren. We accept him. We accept the son. We become a son. We're part of the same generation. Because this thing is spiritual. So I hope that this has been enlightening for you. I know it's a lot of names, but I hope that you found some things that will that will, you know, strengthen your faith. OK, so let us pray. Lord, I thank you uh, that. For all that you've done, I thank you for the knowledge. I thank you for the wisdom. I thank you for the revelation. I thank you for it all. I thank you for the ability to understand the mystery that you have uh, given. And I ask that you will seal these biblical seeds. And I ask that you cause the knowledge of your word to become lifelike. I pray that all will seek you. And of all that seek you, I pray that they seek the truth. And I ask that you would uproot any and all things that will distort and or distract from the truth. Reveal yourself like never before. Reveal the mystery. Open up their understanding. Give them a foundation that the enemy cannot penetrate. Then build your temple to be inhabited by you and by you alone. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.